The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. I'm Amber Bell and this is Real Agriculture. For today's episode of Canola School, I am pleased to have Jack Payne with me of South Country Co-op. He's an agronomy solutions manager. And we're gonna be talking about fall soil sampling in canola, which this year's all over the place. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we need to be soil sampling. Yep. So tell me about this. Why is okay, it so Amber, you know what's happened this year. I mean, um, moisture across the prairies was, you know, we had places that had probably less than four to five inches of rain. South of here, we had areas that had over 15 inches of rain. So, I mean, it's just a, a situation of the haves and have nots. And then if you're lucky, you're sort of in between just right. So it's led us, I guess, into a situation where I'm, I'm predicting where we're going to be going because we're just getting the crops off now. Mm -hmm. We won't be long till we're into the field, soil sampling and, and looking and planning for next year. So if you look at the two extremes, uh, if you look at the at eastern uh, Alberta and into Saskatchewan, where they had some single digit yields, I'm sorry, but there were some areas that took it on the chin again, um, single digit yields. Um, so they're gonna be in a situation again, which they're probably getting, I hate to say it, used to, where you're going to have some nutrient carryover because if you did not remove those nutrients from, your, from the field, there's probably a pretty good chance there's some nutrient carryover. Mm -hmm. So it's important to uh, assess what you've got still in the ground because that's gonna have a big impact on next spring's fertilizer program, right? So if you've got lots of nutrients still in the ground, good news is you don't have to apply maybe as much next year for next year's crop. On the other hand, you go to the other extreme where we had areas where we had 15 inches or more of rain. Now, well, first of all, we're gonna have monster crops like, like this. And if you look at a canola crop, uh, if you look at a 60, 70 bushel canola crop, it's going to remove about 120 to 125 pounds of nitrogen just in the seed. It's going to remove 55 to 65 pounds of phosphate per acre in the seed. So you're removing some, some pretty good chunks of, of nutrients out of the soil just in harvest. The other aspect that we had though is the monsoon season that we had through July and August where we got those heavy deluges of rain, like uh, some storms where they were getting two and three inches at one time. Driving around, I saw these fields. I saw fields where there was standing water. Uh, what you're gonna have is probably nitrogen leaching, where mm -hmm. you're gonna have some of that nitrate would have been pushed down through the soil profile because of that, that heavy amount of moisture and heavy amount of rain at, at a, at a, at a, 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 a quick burst. Or the other thing that you're gonna run into is areas where the water was uh, ponding and where the soil was saturated, we probably had denitrification occurring. And we probably haven't had for Southern Alberta issues with denitrification for several years. But I am pretty sure in July when you've got uh, that those heavy deluges of rain and standing water, there would have been some denitrification. So couple of the two together, um, guys in the east that, that had some, some rough going with their crops and low yields probably have a carryover. I'm expecting, I'm gonna go out on a limb, but I'm expecting if you start sampling some of these fields, you're gonna find that the nutrient uh, bank is gonna be withdrawn quite low. I, mm -hmm. I, that's my guess. That's what I'm going to predict because the nutrients have gone somewhere. And crop removal, first of all, for some of these crops, I'm seeing some monster crops. There's going to be significant crop nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, sulfur removal. So Right. And how deep are you recommending to sample? Well, I've always said from, from a perspective of soil sampling, um, we want to sample zero to six because that's important because that's where our organic matter is. That's, um, uh, you know, the most active part of the soil. But we also need to assess what's farther down because nitrate and sulfate are mobile nutrients. Also, chloride is another mobile nutrient. And if you've got heavy moisture and leaching, uh, some of those nutrients may be pushed farther down. So if you're only sampling shallow, zero to six, you're totally missing what may be down at 18 inches, maybe missing what's down at 24 inches. So I've always been a proponent of multiple depth sampling, zero to six, six to 12, if you're, you know, if you're using a hand probe kind of thing, if you can only get down a foot. If you're able to get down to 24 inches, and with a Dutch auger like this, getting down 24 inches actually is not that difficult. Or if you've got a truck mount probe, getting down 24 inches isn't difficult at all. I mm -hmm. would recommend zero to six and six to 24. Can the plants still access the nutrients if they're past that six, deeper than those, that six inches? Yes, 
As long as there is moisture, as mm -hmm. long as there is moisture, crops will continue to root down. They'll only stop going downward, one, if they encounter hard pan, mm -hmm. like a compacted layer, or if they encounter dry soil, because roots will never go through dry soil. So when you've got moisture going down, like I say, our, our soil profile, when you look at, the, at, at a, a normal soil, um, a good loam would hold about two to two and a half inches of plant available water per foot of depth. So if you've got a three foot profile, you've got maybe six to seven inches of, of stored soil water. So if you've got 15 inches of rain, that means that additional moisture either had to go down or ran off. But roots will continue to grow down. The, the effective rooting depth of canola, believe it or not, is a meter. Mm -hmm. Those root, that tap root will continue down as long as there's moisture, it will go down to a meter. So the crops will access that deeper leach uh, uh, nutrient reserve if it's down there. And so sometimes again, you need to take that into account when you're building your fertilizer budget and your fertilizer recommendation. So I'll give you an example. If there was a lot of nitrate, nitrate that was leached down, let's say in the, the 18 to 24 inch depth, and if you don't sample down there and don't take that into account, let's say there's 80 pounds of nitrogen down at that, at that deep depth. If you're fertilizing your crop for normal, how would I say, normal target yield, you may be over fertilizing. And then come July, when the crop gets down there and hits that uh, 80 pounds of, of, of nitrogen, all of a sudden it gets a huge nitrogen kick. Mm. And what does the crop do? It responds to it. Vegetative growth responds. It goes into that vegetative stage and it lodges, falls over. Right. And I know lots of growers just, uh, they just want to avoid lodging because it's such a huge issue. And so again, um, understanding what's down in that subsoil is really key to understand your, your fertilizer budget and what you need to apply. So again, that you don't over apply and end up then, let's say next year, if we've got really good growing conditions again, with a crop lodging. Right. The other aspect of over, you know, too much nitrogen, again, is the crop will remain vegetative and then that sort of delays the maturity. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Which is not a good thing on certain years. No, that's right. <laughs> um, so if you were to give growers three tips for soil sampling in the fall, what would they be? Uh, three tips. Uh, multiple depths. Again, it's their choice or, how, or, or if they have somebody that does the custom sampling for them with a soil sample truck. Uh, at least two depths. If you're doing a hand probe, like I say, some people only do six to 12. Hey, if that's okay, if that's all you can get, great. It's better than just a zero to six. So, so multiple depth sampling. Um, the other thing is, again, um, we, we can start sampling. The old school was we didn't start soil sampling till way into the late fall because we needed the soils to, to cool down. A couple of things that they found, there's some work that was done uh, in Manitoba found that basically we could start sampling a little bit sooner than, than that. We didn't have to wait until late fall for sampling. The other thing is you got to remember logistics. We've got large mm -hmm. farms. You've got some very large farms and if they're soil sampling, if we, how would I say, push back soil sampling, push it back, push it back to a very narrow window, and we just don't have enough capability to get all those samples processed. So my advice is don't wait. Um, for late fall for soil sampling you know what getting in in the next couple of weeks when the soil cools down um get get sampling uh, get out there and, and and get it done and i think the other thing is um something you're going to uh, i always watch for we, we we're seeing changes in soil quality yeah. and we're seeing one of the things i i, I, I we're going to see this year with the heavy rain that we had this summer that's going to recharge some of the groundwater. And I dare say that next spring, next year, we may see some increased salinity levels. So again, I'm always looking at soil quality, not just for nutrient management, but I'm also looking at soil quality. So get a soil test done and start looking at things like organic matter, pH, soil salinity, and see how that might enter into your crop planning um, again. Legumes typically don't like saline soils, so if you're seeing your salt levels start to increase, you might want to change your crop plan and not put lentils or peas on that particular field. Right. You may want to change to something more salt tolerant, like barley. That's a great note. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time. Thanks. And that was Jack Payne on Real Agriculture. <laughs>